Welcome back. Shares of CureVac lower today after announcing it will shelve its COVID-19 vaccine candidate. The company said it now plans to shift its focus towards developing next-generation shots to fight the virus. Back in June, CureVac's final analysis of its COVID vaccine trial showed an efficacy rate of just 48% across all age groups. Since then, the stock has fallen around 40%. Joining us now in a Closing Bell exclusive is CureVac CEO Franz Haas. Franz, thanks so much for, for joining us uh, on, on today of all days. I, I guess uh, our other rival companies just got there first with a slightly better product. Is, is that fair? Well, that's fair. We have seen in our vaccine product, which we've been developing since beginning of last year, that we have in the age group of uh, between 18 and 50, 60 year old uh, population, uh, rather good protection also against other variants. But in the elderly uh, elderly age group, uh, the performance was not as good as other approved vaccines. You're absolutely right. Uh, and uh, in, in terms of that sort of second part of the announcement, but, but still suggesting you're going to keep developing more broadly in the area, in particular uh, in mRNA technology, T talk us through that and how optimistic you are about that technology that, that you have. Well, first to start with the first product candidate we had, uh, so we have uh, reaching in for, for submission. Now we realize that we will not get an approval for this year for the special age group where we see a nice potent uh, vaccine. So the later it gets, uh, the less demand there is uh, towards 2022 for a uh, such a vaccine in a pandemic setting. So what we have been doing in parallel is, uh, especially together with our partner GSK, to develop a second generation vaccine, which has different properties with regard to the protection and also uh, on other properties that you can build on multivalent vaccines, that you can have other variants included there as well in the same dose with different variants, but also in a combination then, for example, with a flu vaccine. And this is what we are doing. So with the closer uh, we are getting into 2022 with the first vaccine approval, which uh, uh, would be outstanding, the closer we are getting to substantially good data uh, with the second generation vaccine. And this has been driving our decision. What does the market for that look like, Franz? Who, who else is doing this? And, and how does it look to you at this point in the pandemic for those second generation vaccines? Well, we see, you know, the pandemic um, has been changing uh, and God thanks that we have got the vaccines out there. Otherwise, the world would be in a different shape. But the pandemic vaccines are definitely different to uh, the second generation vaccines, which need to come there as well, because we see that there are different variances uh, uh, of, of the co uh, COVID um, uh, virus. SARS-CoV-2 uh, are emerging, and then certainly uh, you're not that much going into primo vaccinated uh, uh, people because they are vaccinated. So you're going with a second generation to keep with the up with the different variances, but also with uh, a longer longevity of the protection, but also again with different kind of uh, strains and multivalent vaccines, and uh, also working on the stability of the vaccines out there. Uh, which is then going from a pandemic most probably into an endemic and be prepared that you can combine it then, for example, with a flu shot.